Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to Face to Face. I'm your host, Dennis Ward. We're here at the Winnipeg Art Gallery, where this week we have two guests. Jamie Isaac, a member of Sagging First Nation in Manitoba, who was recently named the new Curator of Indigenous and Contemporary Art at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. We're also joined by Dr. Julie Nagam, the Chair in the History of Indigenous Art in North America with the University of Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Both are our guests, curated insurgents, resurgents, the Winnipeg Art Gallery's largest ever exhibition of contemporary Indigenous art. Ladies, thank you both for uh, joining us here this week. Jamie, I'd like to start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about what Insurgents Resurgence is about? Uh, Julie and I had um, co-curated this idea and uh, really thinking about um, relevant, timely issues in terms of political insurgency of First Nations um, people. Um, Métis and Inuit, uh, thinking about uh, insurgency and urgency of land rights and um, really thinking through uh, people on the front lines in, in protesting and um, why they were doing that. And uh, people united together to start thinking about not just start but doing it for a long time and really noticing um, some of the up, up surges in that. And in thinking about uh, resurgence, uh, we were really interested in thinking about what the artists were doing, what artists are doing in this show in terms of cultural resurgence. So we have people like Earthline Tattoo Collective that are reviving Indigenous tattoo practices. Um, Amy uh, Mabouf, who is a moose hair tufter, um, we have Barry Ace, Casey Adams, who are thinking about beading and um, the innovations of Indigenous people, uh, past and present. And, um, and Dana Danger, who's doing these beautiful beaded um, s and uh, masks and thinking about uh, that whole past, but also um, the present and, and future of um, reworking something that is considered traditional and we really wanted to blur the lines of what's traditional and contemporary. Julie, can you uh, expand on us a, a little on how this all came to be, this exhibit? Sure. Um, Jamie and I both uh, began in two years ago, I guess a little over two years ago now. Um, both of us being Indigenous curators, um, thinkers, uh, really engaging with different ideas of curatorial methodologies. We were really interested in um, pushing the boundaries of Indigenous curatorial practices. So um, we were presented with an opportunity to put together some ideas for a show. Um, this was one of them. Uh, it took almost two years in its iteration. Uh, lots of uh, debating, uh, lots of time picking. We have 29 artists, 12 commissions, uh, four debuts. Uh, it's a massive show. You know, we took over as much space as possible, I think 17,000 square feet. You know, we invited people to uh, look at um, the space and, and kind of grapple with the space and do work that's site specific. Uh, when you uh, walk out to the front of the building, you see Kenneth Lavallee's work. You also, um, as you come up the stairs, there's Joy Arcan's work up, up the stairs. And uh, right away in the skylight, you see Casey Koizan's work. Um, each piece, uh, you know, we had a hard time uh, picking. There was, uh, you know, both of us <laughs> easily make the argument that you know, Indigenous contemporary artists are making some of the best, if not the most, cutting edge work in Canada. Uh, it was difficult to keep it to under 30 artists. Uh, had more time, I think we'd probably keep expanding and expanding. Uh, we're excited about the future possibilities of what this show will have in its terms of reverberations, that we'd like to continue this kind of large scale uh, work here at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Like you mentioned, it was difficult to, to pick these artists. Can you speak, Jamie, about how you, you did narrow it down and, and how you did decide on, on who to uh, showcase here? Well, we were thinking through the themes and um, researching artists that were already doing work in this area and these themes. And uh, we wanted to have an equal balance of representation of gender, um, men to women, as well as members of the LGBTQ2S communities. And um, 
representation across Canada, so um, many nations are involved in this show. Uh, we have artists from the north, um, from the prairies and south, um, east coast and, and the west. So it was a hard selection, I think, but it was also, um, it's an assertion though that um, there are so many indigenous contemporary artists that are making amazing work. And um, so we have a lot more work to do in terms of um, who we'd like to work with and who we'd like to continue working with. We were lucky enough to visit Kent Monkman's studio and uh, have him on the show last year, but uh, Julie, can you tell us a little bit about some of these artists that are involved? Sure, you want to start with the, probably the most popular, which is Kent. <laughs> yeah. Um, the work is, uh, part of the reason we selected Kent Monkman was he specifically um, did a series called the Urban Res series, which was focused primarily on Winnipeg, and so um, the selection that we picked uh, basically represents uh, Point Douglas uh, and other areas in and around that. And even at the opening, I had a few people come up to me and say, I specifically know where that church is, mm -hmm. where he painted. So I think we were looking at um, a kind of national profile show, but at the same time that had a kind of a local resonance where people could see themselves reflected, be engaged in the work. Uh, so Kent's uh, work was a good example of that. Um, you know, local commissions were uh, Linus Woods, uh, Dee Barcy, Casey Adams, Kenneth Lavalley, mm -hmm. and so it was really nice to have kind of that, um, kind of celebrate some of those local artists. We also really um, focused on uh, emerging artists. That was uh, one of our kind of key curatorial premise, is we also have mid-career and established artists in the show, but we really wanted to um, make sure that um, emerging artists were held up to the same sort of uh, opportunities as established artists. I'm um, just trying to think of some of my other favorites. Uh, I think the one in the shot is a past student of mine from OCAD, uh, Thema Igus. Um, she's doing really amazing work. This is an interactive uh, sound piece that is an installation-based work. Also very different uh, work that's been shown at the Winnipeg Art Gallery prior to mine and Jamie's uh, arrival. Jamie, you kind of touched on this, but you know this isn't just about uh, paintings and, and sculptures. Uh, can you speak to a, a little more of uh, some of the other things that are part of Insurgents Resurgence? Sure, that was the other uh, area that we um, had a lot of fun thinking through uh, in our curatorial approach. We wanted to make sure that there were um, interdisciplinary arts involved, so um, painting, um, beading, video, sound installation, um, film, sculpture, tattooing, fashion, um, uh, sculpture, installation, and um, make sure that the work within the space has a hyper visibility and really um, thinking through Joy Arcan, she, we had a commission with her and she has this um, brilliant um, light installation of Cree syllabics. And it's purposely not translated um, to think through the whole uh, colonial intergeneration um, of not knowing and um, not having your language um, accessible. And so she works with the revitalization of the Cree language um, throughout the space. We have uh, billboards in the elevators and she has a whole, um, she takes up the whole staircase in the WAG with her Cree syllabics and um, you have to sort of find out about them in order to, um, in order for them to be explained and translated. As we said, uh, Julie, this is the, the largest uh, you know, exhibition of Indigenous art, uh, contemporary art. What was it like for you to uh, be involved in a project like this? <laughs> uh, well, it was uh, electric. Like the energy and the vibe of the opening just really um, resonates that Winnipeg can be and should be the center of Indigenous contemporary arts. So for me, it just validates what, you know, Jamie and I always knew, and there's lots of other people that have worked really hard in the past here at the Winnipeg Art Gallery or as independent curators and scholars and artists that have been Manitoba-based for long periods of time. And I think for us, we're just excited to kind of build on that history, uh, be respectful to the past footprints that uh, come before us, and at the same time, just 
rattle the cages of what's going on and just shift the kind of dialogue and just get excited. And we can feel the kind of buzz and energy that's happening around the show. Um, it's excited that it's got um, such great press and kind of national attention. You know, uh, like I said, Jamie and I are excited about what the future holds. Um, and we're just really proud of all of the artists that just really brought it. You know, the work is amazing. The show speaks on its own. Um, you know, each artist really brought a different kind of discipline, a different kind of energy, and a different type of politics. So because the show is Insurgents Resurgence, you know, you look at the vast uh, amount of Indigenous people from various nations across Turtle Island, and at the same time, you see how different interpretations of their work come out in different disciplines and in different ways of communicating them. Jamie, how about for yourself, uh, what was it like to be involved in pulling together the largest Indigenous contemporary art exhibit in, in the country? It was really great. I mean, working with, with Julie, um, we had a good relationship throughout um, the whole process. And working with the artists on their commissions um, and sort of talking through what they were doing. And, you know, having a full sort of Indigenous team with two Indigenous curators, um, Indigenous uh, interior designer worked with us to, um, and within the space, Destiny Seymour, wearing her scarves right now, um, and, and a whole show of Indigenous artists. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's, it, we're celebrating that um, we have this political insurgency in terms of taking up space, and we're celebrating this cultural resurgence that we're thinking through in the show. We've got to take a, a quick break, and then we'll be back with more from the Winnipeg Art Gallery with curators Julie Nagam and Jamie Isaac. Welcome back to Face to Face. This week we're at the Winnipeg Art Gallery joined by two guests, Jamie Isaac, a member of Saguin First Nation who was recently named the new curator of Indigenous and Contemporary Art at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. And we're also joined by Dr. Julie Nagam, the Chair in the History of Indigenous Art in North America with the University of Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Both our guests curated Insurgents, Resurgents, Winnipeg Art Gallery's largest ever exhibition of contemporary Indigenous art. And uh, Jamie, if we can start with you, this is not just uh, the Winnipeg Art Gallery's uh, largest exhibit of this. This is uh, nationwide the largest, is it? Uh, in one space, I think. Uh, it takes over more than 17,000 square feet throughout the entire building and the outside building. There has been um, really amazing large-scale uh, Indigenous, contemporary Indigenous shows in Canada. Um, Close Encounters, Sakahan, um, Land Spirit Power, um, Indigena. So uh, we're following in, in the footsteps of many Indigenous curators working before us. Um, however, I think uh, in terms of being uh, fully self-determined with to um, Indigenous women artists as the curators, um, and uh, also um, an Indigenous interior designer that we worked with uh, for the space, and a fully um, Indigenous show. We have a catalog coming out, and we invited um, Indigenous curators and scholars to contribute to that. So in terms of um, it fully being self-determined Indigenous space, um, in, in text and in um, physical space. I think that you can maybe boast that. <laughs> I'm also careful. <laughs> yeah. uh, Julie, we, we kind of touched on the relevance, but what do you think it is that makes this show so important? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think for, for both of us, I think it uh, really validates and um, makes the kind of work that we do relevant. And um, so for us, I think that that's, not only is it exciting for the larger uh, Indigenous community and the Winnipeg community at large, but it actually allows us um, to kind of build on the excitement and the work that we're doing. 
Um, as for like if it's the largest or not the largest, uh, you know, I think for us it's really just important that we really want to shift the kind of paradigm. We want to make sure that um, Indigenous contemporary artists get hold court within Canadian contemporary art. You know, we want to make sure that they're supported and have opportunities such as commissions and, you know, getting a large scale uh, show. You know, we, we've sort of seen in this past year of the Canada 150 and all of a sudden uh, an interest in Indigenous contemporary art in order to kind of grapple with the politics of Canada only being 150 years old, where we know for us it's, you know, uh, much, much older than that, uh, maybe a millennia. <laughs> so um, I think that we're really excited as it was a political show, you know, we really worked hard uh, to find some funding outside of the Canada 150 lot. Uh, we worked with uh, BMO, uh, they are the title sponsor for the show, and we were really excited that, um, you know, we got carte blanche, you know, we could do what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it, although I'm sure we rattled <laughs> all the staff and uh, of kind of pushing those boundaries, but in the end, everybody became really supportive and excited and kind of uh, rejuvenated by the difference and the kind of um, examples of what you can do. Jamie, when we're talking about shifting the paradigm and the fact that this has received national attention and a lot of media attention, do you see uh, perhaps other art galleries, curators around the country uh, taking notice and following in those footsteps? I certainly hope so. Um, I know, you know, it's, it's helpful that Winnipeg is um, in the center and um, the director of the WAG um, has admitted um, to the fact that we and the WAG should have done this a long time ago. And um, in Canada and North America, Indigenous arts has really been relegated as um, static and um, more represented through an anthropological or ethnographical lens in museums. And so bringing the work um, in this space and, um, and asserting it not just as Indigenous contemporary arts, but as in contemporary arts, this is relevant. And um, a few years ago, um, someone had said that, uh, are we past a time of having an all Indigenous art show? or all Indigenous group show, and I think um, it will always be relevant. Indigenous arts will always be relevant, and um, Indigenous group shows will always be relevant. Um, because how many years and how many decades have we, um, in these kinds of institutions, held up um, art done solely by um, white male artists? And how many shows do we still do that in Canada? So it's really about thinking about that balance of representation in these large-scale institutions. And I think hopefully shows like this will uh, think about uh, acquisitions for institutions, but also um, representations and exhibitions. This uh, exhibit runs for months uh, with different themes. October's theme is, is gender identity. Uh, Julie, was there a reason uh, that you wanted to start there? Uh, sure, uh, mostly because of the partnership with the <laughs> University of Winnipeg, <laughs> like guiltily. But the, um, um, there is a uh, two-spirited and queer women of color gathering that's happening, uh, I think, October 18th, 19th to the 21st. Uh, we've invited uh, one of our artists, uh, Dana Danger, to um, be a guest and uh, make uh, some tire whips. Is that what, uh, yeah? Yes. It's an adult, <laughs> adult uh, plus uh, workshop. We're having all kinds of different programming. <laughs> <laughs> different demographics. And so, um, and then they're also, um, Red Rising Magazine is going to hold their launch here on the 21st in the evening. And Dana Danger will be one of their panelists on that as they launch their, their new issue on uh, Two Spirited. Great magazine, Red Rising. Can you tell us, uh, Jamie, a little more about uh, some of the other things that will be taking place uh, between now and, and April? Sure. Well, we're still uh, solidifying many, many of the programming, but we have themes every month. Um, uh, some are going to be on literacy and language. Um, many of the works in the show uh, speak to the revitalization of languages. Um, and we have uh, technology in November. Um, and uh, well, I, I can't think of the top of my head out of all of them, but there are many. Um, 
every single month we'll be having a different programming. Um, Kent Monkman will be coming in to uh, Winnipeg October 8th to do a talk and some screenings. We're partnering with Decolonizing Lens and Windex um, uh, Moving Images Film Festival and so that's going to be really exciting to have Kent um, in the space and uh, speak to his work here as well. I just want to add for the the month of technology uh, we're going to have um, a symposium um, on indigenous futures and specifically around technology and so at the same time we'll be hosting it, the International Indigenous Curators Exchange from Norway, New Zealand, Australia and some people from the US although they're not technically part of the exchange but the, um, we hope to include them in that conversation. There'll also be a video, indigenous made um, video games, the brand new indigenous work by Imagine Native, uh, IIF, uh, TIFF, uh, it's called 2167, uh, the new, I think it's six VR works made by indigenous filmmakers and artists. Um, we're also going to have um, a cultural night where we'll have some performers. So we're really just excited to kind of build on the momentum of the exhibition to have external programming and really do uh, try to do a good job of outreach within the community and access different uh, groups of people and different organizations. Julie, how exciting was this for you to bring this all together when you know we're talking about gaming and magazines and art and tattooing and, and all of this to see what is happening out there right now? I think that we really push the boundaries and uh, it's actually really exciting. I was sitting at the airport yesterday in Toronto and listening to some random older ladies chat about how there was a resurgence of indigenous tattooing and I was looking down at my recent tattoo that Jamie and I got at the show <laughs> and I was laughing in my head and I was like, wow, if this kind of buzz is actually happening just by you know, two older ladies, which you would never suspect would be talking about a resurgence of indigenous tattooing, you know that you've um, done a good job on, on hitting the right thing at the right time. And I think that um, for us, uh, I think there's just so many opportunities to continue to build on what we've done. Ladies, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us here and congratulate you on the groundbreaking work that has months to go. I look forward <laughs> to seeing some of uh, the upcoming exhibits as well. Thank you both for taking the time to join us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. We will take another break and then we'll be right back to wrap up this week's episode of Face to Face. Welcome back to Face to Face. That's all the time we have for today. Our thanks again to Julie and Jamie. We're always looking for new guests, so if you have any suggestions, please email us at news at aptn.ca. And a reminder, Face to Face is available as a podcast. You can find that at aptnnews.ca slash face to face. Thank you for tuning in this week. We'll see you back here next week. I'm Dennis Ward. <laughs>